Our late minute additions to this week's fight card. We have Ryan Benoit coming in at 10 and 7 in the babyweight bitch face flyweight division. These little men are about to get it on this week. Coming at 5'5. Five, five. God damn it, that's fucking tiny. And 68 and a half inch reach. Uh, he's coming off three losses. Well, two losses this is a grappling belt about. And uh, he's uh, he's here on the main card now. We didn't ask for it, but we got it. His opponent is Adeshev. I'm not going to even say his first name because he's also a bitch. Coming in at three and three. He is also 5'5", five, five, bitch made, with a 65-inch reach, fighting out of Uzbekistan. And as I said, he's 3-3. Three and three. Not a good record at all. Coming off two losses, especially against Tyson Nam, where he looked like a Pillsbury doughboy and actually got flatlined. And uh, his only wins came in the B-League, Bellator. So, Zach, what do you think of this replacement? Dude... I don't even know if I'm allowed to say this word, but I'm going to go for it anyway. This is just, nah, whatever. It's such low-level mixed martial arts. It gives me no interest in terms of contenderships. This was supposed to be the first fight on the bottom of the card, and it got all the way up to the main card with people just dropping out. This is like the midget wrestling of UFC. It's like everybody wants to stand out there and watch these two idiots beat the crap out of each other, but like, there's no real skill there. Like, it's just entertaining because they're beating the crap out of each other. Uh, to be honest, when I was making the thumbnail for this week's YouTube video, for this YouTube video that we are in the process of making right now, I could not find one picture of Adeshev where he wasn't getting his ass beat. And even in those Bellator fights, there were moments, even though he won, where he was getting his ass beat. I think babyface Benoit is a little bit more, uh, you know, not developed. He's older. He's got a higher fight IQ. He's fought better competition. He lost to Brandon Moreno, actually, in the Ultimate Fighter Fighter Finale back in 2016. So, you know, I think he's been there, done that. And while we probably don't care for the matchup too much, I think he's going to win. Yeah, I I agree with you. From what I saw from an analytical perspective, of the fight of his fights was Benoit or however the hell you say his name actually gets in some pretty good firefights and can hold his own. He hits pretty hard and uh, actually shows some pretty good striking. Not, I seen him get taken down by Tim Elliott. He wasn't held there necessarily the whole fight, which was good and promising to see, but he's no stud and neither is Aziz or Adeshev, whatever the fuck his name is. He sucks. He just throws haymakers even though he has kickboxing experience, or the fuck that means, he looked like a fish out of water, just swinging for the fences and tires himself out pretty, pretty easily. But for 125ers, these guys hit fairly well, and it's going to be an entertaining fight regardless. Like Zach said, this is just going to be a shit show. I was about to say, I think there's, I think it's pretty cool that like the implications I see are that one of these guys is probably going to get cut especially because when it was at the very bottom of the fight card, nobody would have even seen one of these guys go missing had they gotten cut. But at this point, I'm imagining they probably still get cut. Regardless, tonight it's a bigger payday You're on your last day at work. It's a nice little get-the-fuck-out bonus from the boss. So I think Adichev is gone, but Ryan Benoit, we're locking in. Yeah, and the genetically inferior flyweight division the the we proved natural selection is fake division because these motherfuckers would be a lot bigger if it was real (laughs) all right getting on to the odds this week we have they can't they don't even know this guy's name on this website all right uh i spelled it wrong yeah yeah ryan benoit coming at minus 130 it's all right you know you know it is what it is and then Adeshev coming at plus 120. Zach, do you even want to touch this with a 10-foot pole? Uh, I'm going to give you a big fat fuck no on that one. If you're going to touch anything, just play money line on Benoit. Don't go waste your money on prop bets here. 
because I'm not even going to bullshit. I don't know what's going to happen. I didn't even pretend to throw a method of victory in there because I don't know what the fuck's going to happen. I mean, realistically, maybe it's just a long, drawn-out, boring decision where Benoit touches him up, Benoit, Badoobie, whatever, touches him up a bunch of times, freaking dances around the cage, and we're, I mean, still looks pretty by the end of it. Bro, these guys hit as hard as, like, a five-year-old girl, bro. They're 125 pounds. They're not knocking each other out. I mean, it's possible. Anything is possible in this fucking game, but... I know, we're giving the flyweights a lot of shit right now, but this... When when you're at 125 pounds, you have to be skilled and pretty good to be entertaining. I mean, you can get two heavyweights out there and don't know what the hell they're doing. It, it might be pretty exciting. You get two flyweights at 125 pound bitch made men, and they don't know what the fuck they're doing. It's gonna be bad. They're gonna they're gonna shit a brick. And Dana knows that. He's had what three fights already drop out today alone. Dude, so, he's putting band aids on big old problems that need stitches at this point. Like you said, people love violence. So if I have any advice to some of you motherfuckers fighting on the card, if anybody watches our video. Be violent today. Do something violent. It'll make you feel better. No killing, though. No killing. No, this is not blood sport. Yeah, it's a, it's a, it's an art form. Express yourself. And we expressed ourselves about this shitty matchup. Wah, wah, wah.